A broken bastard? Inconceivable! He keeps using that word. I don't think that word means what you think it means. You don't have six fingers on your right hand, by any chance. You killed my father. Now prepare to die. Hey, Projectors Bangers here again. Can you believe it? A broken bastard. Now, I've been doing stuff with chainsaws a long, long time, and this is the first time I've ever, ever come remotely close to breaking one of these. So I was doing it up as normal. Here I am doing it up as normal, tensioning it up with the normal spanner, and, oh, it came off in my hands, Chief. It was like that when I got here. I literally could not believe it. I, I've, I've had these with the threads go a little bit, but definitely not snap one clean off. Right, and I was, it wasn't hot or cold or anything like that, it wasn't crazy, it just snapped right off in the hands. So I was pretty surprised. Now, this saw, this saw is an MS311 farm boss, it's a great saw. Okay, uh, that I've had this uh, saw for a long, long time. I maintain it really well, I keep it, I keep it really good, but I just, I could not believe when that, that came off. Now, I went down to the local still dealer and he said that he hadn't ordered one since 2012. Now I thought this was going to I thought this was going to be a pretty common thing. You know, they get I've had one that was damaged once like the thread was well it wasn't quite right. Uh, but I was able to dress that up with a file and, and just press on and I had that on another saw that lasted years. I, I still am in disbelief that this snapped off. Uh, and so I was able to go down to the still. I had to wait a couple of weeks for these to order in. So these have come in which is great. Now on this model, there's two. There's a big fat one, and there's a smaller one. Now, I also got, I was able to get, I got two bar nuts, because I've got a bunch of these lying around anyway, but I thought, hey, may as well just renew the whole thing. So, we've got, these are, these don't exactly tell us what they're called. They're called collar screw, okay, great story. There's the part number for that one. So there's the small one, and you can see how it looks. There's the small one there, okay? And then this is the larger one. So I'll get this out for you and we'll have a quick look. So that's the small one. Here's the large one. There's the part number for the large one. Okay, and there it is there. So that goes, you can see that goes right into the block, which is gonna be pretty cool. Now, these have a right-handed thread, so they wind in righty-tighty, okay? Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So that when you're tightening these bar nuts up, you're tightening the, you're tightening the nut up as you're tightening up the the bar, and it's it's at the same time winding that into the into the chainsaw. Okay, so it's not gonna if you were tightening them up on the left hand thread, or these were a left handed thread, as soon as you went to tighten it up, it would want to wind out. So that's that's key for us to know because when we're gonna pull these out, some things on your chain. Some things on your chainsaw, like your clutch pack, that's a left-handed thread. So you wind it, you crank it left-handed uh, to do it up, and, and doing it up is the action that takes it off. So, so righty, loosey, lefty, tidy, if you will, which is hard to say, say that five times fast. So this has already got Loctite on it. You see the, you see the red there? That's, it's already got Loctite on it, so we can go ahead and wind these straight in. All right, we'll get the old ones out. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of tricks. I'm gonna replace both just because that's the kind of guy I am. You, you wouldn't have to, but I'm tipping. Maybe there was an issue with the start or something like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace replace both. So, just because I could get them. So, and they weren't that expensive. So here we go. Let's get into it. One more thing to note. You can see the thread on this one and the thread on this one. This one is going to wind into the casting of the block and this one is going to wind into the plastic of the chainsaw. That's that engineered plastic thread these guys came up with, those crazy engineers, German engineers, and this is the, a standard thread that's metric thread that's going to go into the block, so we'll crack on and get into that now. So we're going to need to do a couple of things. We're going to have to take the bar off straight away, which is fine. That's pretty straightforward, so we're just going to use our standard spanner to make that happen. We can do that without looking. Right, happy days. We're gonna take our cover off, get that right off. I reckon that nut's had a bit of a hard life. 
put that one aside. Actually, we'll do that, we'll put that here. Then we're gonna back our chain tensioner off. Okay, so that's just straight forward. Out she comes like that. You can see that tension coming off that now. All right, which is fine. Then back that tension, back that tension right off. Uh, you take our bar and our chain off. We're gonna lay that over here for later. All right, so we can already see that both of these, right, you can see, you can't really tell which is which from the, fr from the front here but I can almost guarantee you that this one is the big one and this one is the small one. There's no physical size, size difference to be able to tell, but I've looked it up in the manual and that's the ones they are, okay? So what we're gonna try first is we're gonna put two nuts on this front one and try and get it out. So the beauty of that is we're actually gonna use that old nut as the first one to go on. So this is just like having two lock nuts. Right, so there's no, there's not doing, I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just literally gonna wind this one on. I'm gonna wind this, I'm gonna wind this nut on as far as I can. Right, so with enough room for the second nut. So that's that one there. We're gonna put this second nut on. And we're gonna tighten. That one's damaged as well, which I've had this saw for years and years and years, so it's no surprise that these threads are a bit, how's your father? Right, so we're gonna wind that on till it meets up with the second one. It's just about met up now. That's it, perfect. Then we're gonna need a couple of spanners that are the right size. What size is this? Yeah, thought so, 19 millimeters. Right, we'll need another 19 mil, another 19 mil spanner. Hey, that needs to be looked at. Another 19mm spanner. Great, so as we go, I'm actually, I'll probably do it like this. I'll put the chainsaw flat on the bed here. I'm actually gonna really nip up on this and make sure it's really tight. And then I'm just gonna oppose those two nuts. Then I'm gonna keep a slight bit of pressure on this one, and I'm gonna use this one to want, hopefully wind that stud out. So, whoo. Okay, I can see there now that stud is moving in here, right down in here. Okay, so if I, there we go, now that stud's coming out. Now I flip the saw up again, I can wind that stud out. Okay, that worked out, that worked out well. That was pretty straightforward. Oops, if I can operate my spanner properly. I'll pay attention, there we go. comes so there's that plastic thread so that front one is the small one like I was saying earlier perfect so that's gonna go we're gonna put that one straight back in or uh, we're not gonna put that one straight back in we're gonna go we're gonna give ourselves room to move on this one so we're just gonna put these aside this is no good to me because I don't have the room to put the two nuts on this on this one here that snapped off but I know it's gonna be this large one so I'm gonna give this, this isn't obviously the best way, I don't think, but I'm gonna give this a go with the vice grips knowing it's damaged anyway. So, we'll come over here. We've got a couple of different sizes of vice grip here. So, I've got the good old Faithfuls, <laughs> made in Taiwan, excellent. I prefer nothing less. So, we're just gonna, I'm really gonna just Try and clamp up on this as hard as I can on the first go. Give ourselves a bit of swinging room, make sure we're not gonna hit anything. Nope. Ooh, that's tight. Now again, I'm just gonna get into this and see if it'll turn this. Nope. A little bit tighter. Huh. That's as tight as they go. Wonder if we can get it on the end here. Nope. Next one's down. Ooh. Oh, okay, I think that's about to go. So, it's, it's holding and ooh, there it goes. Okay, so I'm just gonna, gonna gently wind that around. What we had to do there is break the Loctite. So that, that wanted to impact here on this, on the drive pin for that. So we're just gonna get another grab at it for the chain tensioner. Just gonna get another grab at it. 
Now we've, um, now we've cracked the Loctite off. Let's see if we can't get this. There we go. Oh, gonna change, change vice grips here to a bit that are a bit more, a bit of a smaller size. Nope, doesn't want to know me. We got it started, but so nope. So just readjusting the just gonna readjust the vice grips here. These things are a bloody these over centered vice grips are a godsend. I don't know whoever came up with it, but that guy needs a medal. So a bit of right handed. Oh, you, you bastard. Sometimes you gotta get, get the right angle, the dangle of these here. So I've got a set of flat, flat jaw vice grips here. You might need to get something like this. Oh, I'll go the right way. So, get this uh, over center on the cam of the vice grips. Oh, here we go. Oh, beautiful, nice and strong. Here we go. Come on, baby. Yeah, got it. There we go. There she comes. Oh, that was tough. Whew. Here she comes. Excellent. Beautiful. Whew, that was in there. Now, I did have another game plan for this if that wasn't gonna work. I was gonna give that a few more goes and if it really wasn't gonna get, get it out with too much uh, trouble with these vice grips, Ugh, vice grips, which they can be pretty handy. I was gonna tack a nut on there, another nut I've got lying around. I would have got a rag, had a welded a nut on there from the top and put a socket on and wound it off with a socket. Was worried about that stripping, again, uh, snapping again, but I think we've proven there that you can get it out with the vice grips, but it was tough and you're probably better off if you had enough thread, you could do the double nut or you could just weld a nut on there or use your vice grips. But we got there in the end, so that was pretty straightforward. So we've got our big one here at the back and the big one at the front. Now, I'll just get a rag going here. So I'm gonna clean some of this up fairly well. Make sure these holes are clean. And what I'm actually gonna do, I'll actually blow those holes out with the, with the air just to make sure. There we go. Whoops, turn the air on. Oh, there we go. So we're just gonna blow those holes out. There we go. So I've just, I'm just going to really make sure that in the seat, in the two seats at the bottom here, of, that's going to house these shoulders are really clean. I want to send that all the way home, and I don't want any junk in there. So I've just got a flat blade screwdriver, and I'm just going to run around the edge of that. Now, bearing in mind, I've never done this before. I'm just winging this part of it, right? But I'm assuming we can just wind these in. So, what the, one of the beautiful things I can see is, is that yeah, that's pretty clean now. What I can see is, is this already has the Loctite on it, so that's great. Okay, so right-handed thread. So what we will do though is we'll get our two, two new nuts. And we'll get this nut off here. I'll end up taking that old nut off and I'll just keep this in my chainsaw bag because yeah, it's pretty handy. If I do snap one out and I feel great, it's in there. I'll probably keep it forever and ever and be 80 and then someone will be like, what's this? I'll be like, <laughs> mate, trust me. They're like, they don't snap. I go, it's not where I'm, that's not where I'm coming from. So we've got that small one at the front ready to go, and we've got the big one at the back. Uh, and I'm just gonna get into this. I'm gonna wind this, I'm gonna, whoops. I'm gonna wind this one on here. 
Uh, oh, that's beautiful. That's, it just goes to show how probably old and, old and sad those other old ones were. Now I'm going to nip this up. And it's, I, I honestly believe it's probably going to be right just to wind in and it'll tighten on itself. But I'm just going to, just going to get that started. I'm going to nip up on these two here. There we go. And now I can use that to wind that one in. And I'm just going to do that gently at first. I can feel it taken up on the thread. I'm paranoid about stripping that down in there, but it seems to be winding in beautifully. I've done nothing else but just start sending that in, so that's good for players at home if that's what they're finding. I've literally just started to wind that in, and it's take. I could feel it take up on the thread. This actually, I'm baffled. I'm surprised this just couldn't be any easier. Now I'm not going to go wildly tie with that. I'm sure there's some sort of spec but I can see that it's all down level where it should be. It's all nicely in the right spot. I don't want to sort of overdo it a little bit because I think people, you know, tend to overdo these nuts a lot and that's where they get, you know, almost, that's what I might have done. <laughs> but I just, I'm only doing it with this, you know, like that's all I've done all my life. I don't sort of put any sort of weird tension on it. Now, or over tension, now this one's the same. So I'm just gonna throw these on there as well. So you can see that all I'm doing is double nutting this. That's all I'm doing. And I haven't read the manufacturer's recommendation here, but um, the still guys, but I gotta be honest with you. If you've ever put any studs in an engine or anything like that, you just, you don't have to overthink it. You just put this in. Now, that one didn't have any Loctite and it didn't have any Loctite on it. So I'm just gonna wind it in. So again, just gently at first. Yeah, I can feel it's taken up on the thread. That's fine. In I go. Dum dum. In I go. And I'm just gonna nip that tight. Yeah, beautiful. I doubt that's gonna come out. And two nuts off. <laughs> there we go. And that is replacing the bar studs on a steel chainsaw. Well, in particular, an MS311, but I'll probably hazard a bet there's a fair few models that are very similar to this. So this is one of those times where things kind of went right. Okay, I've had this sort of stuff on here all night trying to figure stuff out and you know, this, that and the other. I will say that I would have welded a nut on there. I've got the welder over here. I would have tacked a nut on that if I got into trouble, but the vice grips seemed to do it. So we got out of trouble there. I'm just looking down the barrel here to make sure that, I'm just looking to see that these, the two faces of these nuts are lined up. Okay, there you go. So now we've got that sorted. I'll give you a couple of tips on putting your bar on your, on your saw. This long track here at the very top of where the bar is secured to the chainsaw, just above the bar studs, that is the oiling track, okay? So the oil pump is driven by a wire piece that goes around and around with the sprocket here and the clutch, and it drives the, it's a little gear pump in there that drives the oil from the oil tank out through that little hole, through that slot, and that slot lines up with this hole on your bar. Okay, so you can look down through here and see that, that, ho that the hole goes through there, that hole goes from there into the slot here where the chain runs. And it's also, it's pumped in there at a, at a certain rate that matches the RPM of your chainsaw. And here's a tip for young players. On the bottom of a lot of your steel saws, there's a screw here. And that screw at the bottom is your chain lubrication adjustment screw. So you, I'll do another video on that soon, okay? Because it's a bit of complex. So what I recommend to people is, Make sure that both holes on your, so your blade is universal on, on a steel blade. You can put them, which, like they are on a fair few saws, you can put them top, top to tail, okay? So you see a lot of guys, oh, your bar's upside down. Yeah, mate, I rotate it every time I use it, okay? Every time I sharpen the blade, I rotate the bar, okay? Uh, so then, now, you wanna make sure that that hole is lo lines up and the reason why that's got a long, that's elongated is to, is to track that hole, that delivery hole for the oil with the bar as it is tensioned forward and back. Okay, so now you wanna make sure that's nice and clean. 
yeah, I've cleaned this out. Yeah, great story. Okay, it's ready to go. All right, and that's, I know that's ready to go. Now, when you go to put your chain on your bar, oh, this is the way I recommend you do it. Hold your bar, hold your bar up straight like that or rest it on something like that and get, just get comfortable, right? You can just hold it up. And then this is gonna be the top in this case. So get your chain going in the right direction, e.g. the cutting faces going this way, right? And then just rest your, just on the nose of the bar, just get the chain and gently sit it on like that, okay? And then get it to run in the tracks, in the, in the gauge, in the chain gauge all the way down. And then just put a bit of tension on it. So I'm just pulling, I'm holding the nose and I'm pulling down like this. And just give it a wiggle and make sure the chain is slipping all the way through and it's touching all the way. Okay, when you get used to this, you can do that in a couple of seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that upside down. Now that'll hold in there. I can walk around like that. I can, that's a really good way to hold that without cutting yourself and whatever else. Now, hold your chain, hold the bar and the chain like this, okay? Now it's gonna sag a little bit there, but that's fine. You'll notice I'm not struggling with trying to manage the chain here and manage the tongue. Okay, I'm just keeping, I'm just, I've just grabbed it and keeping tension on it, it's keeping tension on the whole of the chain. Now, I can do this one of a few ways. I know, I know guys that do it, oh, so I'm resetting that there. I know guys that do this like this, right? Great, and then they put that on. And you can manage this, so put your saw on the side. I'll, I'll show you this way, then I'll show you the next one. So all the while, I can lay this down. Look, so now I've got that chain in that position. I can manage, oh, <laughs> good on me. I'll fumble it, so, but now here's, here's the demonstration. I'm, I'm straight back. I'm making sure that's in the tracks all the way, right? Sometimes you've got to be a bit gentle with it, right? Now I can manage that. It's not going anywhere. I can, you know, that's what I'm doing. So now I'm just gonna lay that down. It's totally out of the way. I can lay my chainsaw down like this and I'm gonna wind, I'm just gonna wind the tensioner all the way back towards the saw, so out, I'm winding lefty loosey all the way out, right? So, out I go. So now, now I can just pick my chainsaw blade and my, my, the bar and the chain up, right? Now I just, I just gently lay it on like this. And I can work here, I'm not sort of hunched over. You know, your saw's fine to be like this, right? There we go, and now, I can just gently manage this and I'm gonna wind, so I'm gonna wind this out. I just wind, wind, wind until I feel it's like, oh, it's getting pretty tight. Okay, yeah, it's gonna get fairly tight now. It's coming, it's, now it's not so tight. Just making sure that's on the sprocket. Yep, okay, it wasn't on the sprocket. Okay, so now I'm not really even I t you can see how comfortable I am. I'm just, you know, I'm not fighting with it. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just gently winding it so it's got a little bit of tension on it, okay? And then I can do one of a couple of things. I can support the bar like this, and I've got a little bit of, I've got a little bit of, I can manage it here like this. I come straight, I'm still relaxed. I come straight up. I'm able to see what I'm doing. I can see the, I can see the bars. I can see that that's on properly. Great. Then the next beautiful thing is, I just keep tension down on that, down like this, okay? And now we go to our friends, the two bar nuts. Put those on. There we go. And then I'm still relaxed here. I'm still just, I haven't even, I'm not even struggling or anything. I'm just, and now I'm just gonna nip these up, right? Beautiful. Now I can take the pressure off. So that's one way to do it. You'll see it fell in beautifully there. Now, that's not really gonna go anywhere. Okay, now I can go ahead and start to tension the chain up. Now I can start to tension this up. And I'm just, I haven't really fought with it or anything. Break off, give it a run through. And do this as you're tensioning your chain. Just, just gently drag it through the saw so you don't get to a point where you're all bound up and you've tightened it too far. So now that's getting pretty tight, right? So it's taken up on the bottom there. Right, a little bit too tight. Back off half a turn. Now, 
You'll see a lot of people that want to hold the front of their bar up to keep the tension on. That's great. But I'll offer you another way. I, I pull up, instead of pulling up on the bar, I pull up on the tail of the chainsaw, just like this. I put my hand underneath. And this is why I do it that way. Because when I go to tighten up the nuts, I'm, I'm holding the saw up and I'm, a, and I'm opposing the two forces. But if I'm holding the back of the saw up, I've got to tighten this way. I'm going to tighten this way anyway. The saw wants to go that way. So I pick the back of the saw up and now I can pick up. I'm just going to tension that up and I'll go, okay, there's that upward tension on the, on the, on the blade, on the bar, right? I can, I can give that a bit of a snap and check that I'm happy with it, right? And then I'll go and tension it up. And you see here, I'm still relaxed. I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, I'm not working hard to hold the saw or anything. Now I come, I give it a bit of the beans. And you can see, that's that same action. After a while, I can just let it go, providing this isn't in the dirt, of course. And I'll just nip up like that. That's it. That's all I have to do. Here I go. Oh, there we go. Nip up. Beautiful. Now, that chain will be pretty well tensioned. Okay, excellent. And it's got that upward kick on the bar. So when I start to go, when it buries into a log, it's already at the right, the chain's already at the right tension. So there you go. That's the tips, okay? I, that went a lot smoother than I thought. There you go for anyone who's ever snapped a bar stud in their chainsaw. Again, this is a 311 farm boss. This is one of my favorite saws. This has got a 20 inch bar on it. The saws never really let me down except for this. Uh, so yeah, hope that helps somebody and uh, happy projecting.